Okay, uh, we can, we're going to have Sunday school tonight, so I want all the kids to come on down front, if you would. After you. <laughs> Jesse, get up. Hi, guys. Sure, come on down, kid. Come on, boys. I love it. So maybe a little bit closer this way, guys. It's like when I'm talking about the poster, you can see it. Can you come on over a little more? All right. Did y'all have a good week? Anybody go swimming? You know, it's really important. You God cares about everything we do, right? Kids that we have fun, too. Amen? Amen. Did y'all have fun out there this week? <laughs> but we, we do. We start out with, you know, in Sunday school asking the kids how their week went. Because you know what? God cares about how your week went. Amen. Amen? So anyway, we're going to talk about building. Can everybody say, I'm a builder? I'm a builder. You're what? I'm a builder. All right. We're going to build a house. And it says here, I will build my house on the rock. Who's the rock? Can anybody tell me that we're going to talk about tonight? Jesus, yes. But it says when we build a house, this is like a real house that we live in, right? And it says if we don't build that house on a good foundation, like a rock, if we don't do that when the rain comes and the storms come, it's going to fall down, right? So we need a good foundation. But as Christians, when we ask Jesus in our heart, we need to build on that foundation of Jesus. Amen. We need to grow in the Lord. So we need to learn more about Him. We need to hide God's Word in our hearts so we don't sin, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about building tonight. And I'm going to explain to you what building we're talking about. We're not talking about a house made out of straw or sticks. You ever hear the story about the three little peas? <laughs> yeah? Well, their mother was going to send them out because now they're old enough, they need to go out and build their own house. And the mom sent them out and she said, you know, now you go out and, and be wise in how you build. Do we need to be wise in how we build? We're going to find out why we need to be wise, right? We don't want to be foolish. So anyway, the first little piggy, he went out and he saw this guy selling straw, so he went to buy the straw, I thought, oh man, that'll be easy to build my house, and it'll be quick, and then I can have lots of time to play, and dance, and, and you know, I'm not have a care in the world, I don't have to do anything, so I'm just going to grab this straw while I can, and build this house, so he built his house out of straw, didn't really have much care, and just wanted to have fun, and not worry about nothing, so the second piggy, he went out and built his house out of sticks, well, you know, like the first piggy, it's kind of like us in our spiritual lives. The first little piggy made it out of straw, so it's like kind of like Christians. You know, they think, well, maybe we go to church once a year or just some holidays. That would be enough. Well, the second piggy thought about it a little bit more than the first piggy and thought, well, I'll build my house out of sticks and I still can make it quick, but in a little better than the first piggies. And maybe I'll just have to go to church as a Christian. I'll just, you know, maybe go once a Sunday and then the rest of the week I can just play and have fun. So he built his house really quick too. And he just wanted to, you know, play and fiddle around and, you know, not have God first in his life. So on the third piggy, he was going to take some time because he was wise. He was going to build his house with bricks. And he knew if he took time doing that, you know, when the storms come, it wouldn't blow away. But we're going to be talking about our house. Can you point to your heart? This is our house. And it says in the Bible that we're a spirit, soul, and body. Okay, we have a spirit that communicates with God. We have a soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions. That's where we choose. It says, I will. 
So when we have a soul and in it, our mind, will and emotions, we choose there. And we live in a house. This is my house. Can you see me? This is my house. Inside I have a soul and I have a spirit, right? Okay, so I have a so what does that mean? Okay, this is my house, and the soul is like your door, okay? Do you ever open that door? What do you let in that door? It's important what we let in our door in our spiritual life, right? We don't want to let bad things in. We want to hide God's word in our heart. We want to put God's word in our heart. We want to put love in our heart. We want to learn about Jesus. So it's really important that we build our house on Jesus and learn about Jesus and put him in our heart. So when the storms of life come, we're strong. You know, the devil's not going to come and steal our joy. He can't come and steal our salvation. You know, we talked a lot about, we sang a lot about songs tonight about heaven and how glorious it is going to be when we get to heaven. But you know, on this earth, God wants to fill our heart. He says if we follow his commandments, he will enlarge our hearts. He'll make our heart bigger to receive all the love that he's got. And when we receive that love, see all that light in that house? When we let Jesus in our heart, and we have his love and his happiness and his joy, we can let that out to love one another, to love like Jesus did. He says, I mean, we've been crucified with Christ. No longer I that liveth, but Christ in me. Jesus went to that cross to forgive us of our sins, so we wouldn't have to sin anymore. We can be delivered from that. We can have joy in our heart. We can have light in our heart, but it's going to depend on what we put in our souls. Are we going to put God's word in our hearts? Are we going to put his love in our hearts? Or are we going to put hate, jealousy in our heart? Or gossip? Or any of those bad things? You know, Christ came that we would not have to have those kinds of things in our heart. You know, the fruit of the Spirit it's love and it's joy and it's peace and self-control. He wants us to have all those things because those things in our heart are from the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. If we let God's love in us and, and be led by the Holy Spirit, we're going to walk in the fruits of the Spirit. It says in, uh, we're going to read some scripture here. It says, and this is what the scripture is there on that poster. First I want to read on the 17th. It says, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. So how do we get good fruit in our life? Pardon? By letting, opening that door and letting good things come in, right? And letting, you know having fellowship with Jesus, hiding God's word in our heart. It's real important to hide God's word in our heart. This is a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So we want to have good fruit in our life. We want good things coming through that door, right? So we need to love one another, we need to be kind to one another, um, we need to have the fruits of the Spirit. And how we do that is, it says, therefore, whoever hears these things of mine, what's he talking about, the Bible? Whoever hears these sayings of Jesus, and that's why we have the Bible, right? So we can hear his sayings. And whoever does them will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Oh, a wise man. You want to be wise? Do we all want to be wise? We don't want to be foolish. So we need to hide God's word in our heart that we might be wise. Amen. You know, when we get born again, we ask Jesus in our heart. By faith. It's by faith that we believe in the Word of God. It's by faith that we can walk in all the promises of God. It's by faith. It's by believing and accepting Him into our hearts. And then the next thing we do is we need to hear the Word, like we're doing tonight. You guys are being obedient. You've come to hear the Word. 
But we also need to be a doer of the word. I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Because you guys found Jesus, and you have him in your heart, and you have him in your heart every day, and you follow what he says, guess what? You're not going to fall. You're not going to stumble. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, what do we need to do? We need to be a doer of his word. You know, Pastor Brian comes every Sunday and preaches the word. You know? And I preach the word on Sunday. <laughs> My mom goes, what? <laughs> anyway, she comes and... Uh, Kel Kira. 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 My mind way somewhere else. Kira teaches the word. You know, do you kids take that home? Do you guys take that home and be a doer of that word and not just a hearer? If we're going to be wise, it says right here that we must be a doer. If we're not a doer, we're foolish. But if we're a doer of God's word, we can be wise. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it fell and great was its fall. You know, Brian, Brian's a good example this week, you know. Um, we need to be strong. Just because we're Christian doesn't mean we're not going to have some trials and, and some testings and some temptations. But if we hide God's word in our heart, we're going to be strong enough to get through and still have that joy and that peace. It says, fruit of the Spirit is peace. We can have peace even in the storms. That's amazing. You know, I've got all these love little hearts here that represents Christ's love. He loves us so deeply, so passionate, that he desires to have that relationship with us so deep that we have an everyday walk with him. Because he died so he could be that rock. So he can be that firm foundation that we have something to hold on to. We have a hope. We don't just have hope of heaven. We have hope of an everlasting love that Christ has for us even on this earth. And you know what? We shouldn't be in no hurry to get to heaven because he's got plenty for us to do here. He needs that love so poured out of us. Like this little lighthouse, there's a lot of light in that house. And we have a lot of light because we have Jesus in us. But there's a dark world out there. There's many out there that don't know the truth. That don't have the love of Christ. And have never experienced Christ's love. But God's love is so big for each one of you. You each one are, you are so special. And God's desire, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, their desire is to come and abide with you. He says, abide with me. And you'll be right there with us. He wants a relationship. He wants a good relationship. He wants our house built on his foundation because it's truth, it's life, it will set you free. And you can actually be full. Your heart can be full, even though we go through lots of trials here. Sometimes we don't understand them. You know, Brian went on vacation. We don't understand why he had to spend a whole week in the hospital. That would not be fun, would it? You go and think you're going to go to Disneyland and then all of a sudden you end up in the hospital for a week. We don't understand some things, but God's got a better plan. He can turn things around for our good. So anyways, as we um, rely on the Holy Spirit and rely on that relationship with God and hide His Word in our heart, we're going to have a life full and abundantly, God said. Um, let's go to Luke. Luke 6, 46. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? You know, the two commandments in the Bible, it says to love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your soul, in all your mind. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotion, so we need to love the Lord with all we got. 
and to love one another. If we fulfill those two things, we will fulfill his commandments. And when we follow his commandments and do, be a doer of those commandments, our heart will be full. So, ask yourself this question. Well, why do, we, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Do you ever say any bad things to anybody? Do you ever get mad at mom and dad? Do you ever get mad at your neighbor? We have. We, we kind of mess up sometimes. But you know what? When we ask God to forgive us, he is faithful and just to forgive us. And then we need to, to get up and we need to get going. You know, even when we go through trials, sometimes it's frustrating. Sometimes we feel like giving up. But we don't have to because Christ is there. We just get up and go because we know what the Word of God says. We have faith in the promises of God. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation. It takes probably more time to build the foundation than the actual house, right guys? Who's ever built a foundation out there? So, is it important to build that foundation? Yeah. If you don't, you're not going to have a very good house, right? So when the storms come and the rain comes, it's going to crash. I live in a trailer. You think that's a very good foundation? I don't think so. But we do have a shelter we can run to if the storm comes because we know that that trailer isn't very good to stay in if, it's, if it, the tornado comes or anything because that tornado is going to go take it right away. Right? So, then I need, you know, I need to run to the shelter. You know? We need to run to Jesus as our shelter. Right? Then we get to worry about a storm or a tornado or rains or anything like that. If you get down to the shelter first. There was a time when there was tornado warnings out and I started running down to the shelter and I wiped out. <laughs> I didn't get to the shelter. If there would have been a tornado, I would have definitely been uh, toast. But, uh, but still, I got up and I still went to the shelter. You know, sometimes we do fall. Sometimes we need Jesus to help us back up. But you know what? He loves us with an everlasting love. He just gets us, helps us get right back up. Isn't he good? You know, I don't know how these people do it that don't have Christ in their life because they're deceived. They don't have a hope. They don't have a joy. How do you live without Christ? It's impossible to have a good life without him. It's hard to have a good house, solid house without him. We need Jesus in our life. Anyway, so, the big, the pig that did the, the brick house, it says, you know, the big bad, there's a big bad wolf out there, you know, the three little pigs. And anyway, that wolf came to the first little piggy's house that made it a straw. What happened? Do you guys remember what happened? <gasps> it blew right away, didn't it? And the, the big wolf, what did the big wolf do? Yes, he huffed and he puffed. <laughs> Boy, that didn't take long, right? That straw just went flying, didn't it? So little piggy was like, ah! So he ran to the next guy's house, right? The guy that had the, the little piggy that had the stick house. Well, here comes a big bad wolf again. Who's a big bad wolf in our life? The devil is. He comes trying to blow down our house. And that's why we need God's word in our heart. So he can blow us over. And that we can't lose our faith. Our faith needs to be strong. And that faith only comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, right? So anyway, the big bad wolf, what did the big bad wolf do to the stick house? <gasps> it blew away again. He hugged and he puffed. <gasps> 
Sure did. It was gone. So what did that second piggy do? Ran to the next house. It's a good thing people out there know where to run when their house blows down, right? So they went to the third piggy's house. What happened then? Here comes along the wolf. What did he do? <gasps> no, he couldn't, but he tried to get these. He huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed. <sighs> what? It didn't blow down like the rest of them. What happened? So I'm going to try it again. I'm, I know the secret here. I can get this guy to fall. I can get this guy to bow down. So he huffed and he puffed. He finally gave up. He gave up because he couldn't blow the house down. Do you know what? So that third little piggy, he was glad that he took the time to build his house. He was glad that he had hided God's word in his heart. He was glad he went to Sunday school every morning. He was glad he went to those Bible studies. Because you know what? He couldn't blow that house down. So these two little piggies were like, Oh, we should have listened to our mom in the first place. She said we should be wise, and we were foolish. We didn't take the time to do what we were supposed to do. You know what? And a lot of us in life don't take that time. We're too busy. We run here. We run there. We do everything but getting God's word. And when those storms come, we wonder, what happened? The devil came and he huffed and he puffed and huh, didn't take much to get that out. But if we hide God's word in our heart and we be doers of that word, guess what? The devil's going to come and he's going to try to huff and puff and he's going to be like when he went to that brick house. He huffed and he puffed and he couldn't figure out why can't I get this person to stumble? Why can't I get him not to go to church? Why can't I get him not to read his word? But you know what? If we're not full of God's word, we're going to be weak when those times comes, when the devil tries to come and distract us. But the most important thing is we're missing out on God's love. He says, I've come that you would have abundant life, life full of joy, full of peace, full of gentleness, long-suffering. We can be a light to our families, to those ones that need a place to come and run to. So we're ready. You know, this church needs to be ready because God is about ready to pour those little piggies that built their house on the sand to come in and get strong and get filled and begin to get to know who God is. Because we have a truth. We have an everlasting love. We have a rock to stand on. He is our strength. He is our all in all. He gave everything. He says, I've already laid that foundation. You don't have to do all that hard work. All you have to do is build your house on my foundation. I've done it for you. I've done it for each one of you kids. I don't care if you're three or if you're a hundred. We can all begin to build our house better. We can become wise in building that house. Do you want to be a wise person? Sure you do. You want joy in your life? Sure you do. Do you want to go to heaven? Sure you do. You don't want to have, you don't want to miss heaven. So I encourage you to hide God's word in your heart to get to know Jesus more and more. Desire to come to church. Enjoy coming to church and having fellowship with one another. So if we love God with all our heart, all our soul, all our might, and we love one another, the joy of the Lord will be our strength because He is our joy. He is our strength. So we need His his word. It's as simple as that. Galatians 2.20. Yeah. 
It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, you hear that saying about, you know, we're all sinners, yes. We've all sinned. We all fall short of the glory of God. Right? We, we need a Savior, which is Jesus. And when we ask him in our heart, he forgives us. He wipes those sins away as far as from the east as to the west. Like we've never done those things. And yes, as Christians, we mess up at times. And God is faithful. If we ask him to forgive us, he will forgive us. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. But the truth I think we miss. He says that I no longer live. I've been crucified with Christ. Christ crucified those sins. We no longer have to battle those sins. We no longer have to yield to those sins in our life. We don't have to be sinners. It's by grace we're saved. But God has a grace that we can come to him. Now his grace isn't that he's going to cover our sins. His grace is sufficient so we don't sin. Do you know you don't have to sin? You have a choice? I will choose life or death each day. I don't have to choose to sin. I don't have to do, choose to bow down to this flesh and yield to the things I know I'm not supposed to do. Right? God wants us to be obedient to parents, right? And we need to be that faithful. We need to honor our mom and dad. There's a blessing that comes with honoring our mom and dad. There's many blessings if we be a doer of God's word that we're going to be able to walk in. We don't have to be sinners. His grace is there for us to live each day without having to sin, without having to bow down to the devil, without having, when the devil comes and he huffs and he puffs, that we're not going to fall. We're going to be strong. His word makes us strong. We don't have to sin anymore because Christ died that we might be free. He says, if I set you free, you will be free indeed. We are not slaves to sin. I'm sorry. Amen. We're set free by the grace of God and his love. He came that we might have life. You know what? There's going to be no sin in heaven. What if God allowed sin in heaven? It'd be just like this earth. Right? So God can't allow sin into heaven. So thank God for the blood of Jesus. If we do mess up, we need to ask for forgiveness. We, we don't need to be in other world. As it where you can keep sinning and it's by grace that you're going to go to heaven. No, he's come that we would be delivered. We would be set free from sin. That we would be able to walk freely and be strong enough so when the storms of life, when that enemy comes to knock on your door, we're not letting him in. He can huff and he can puff all he wants. And we can just say, forget it. I know the truth. This is what the Word of God says. Speak the Word of God. Hide it in your heart. So you can have an abundant life. So you can walk in that fruit of the Spirit. Even in the trials that may try to come. I love God's word. I, I, and I'm as guilty as probably any one of you out there that I do not get in this word like I should. But Lord, I ask you right now, let's all bow our heads right now. Lord, I just ask you to forgive us, Father, for not walking in all your word, that we don't hide your word in our heart like we should. Lord, help us to desire, to hunger after your word, hunger after righteousness, after truth. Father, because you love us so much, you desire to have that relationship with us that would just be so overwhelming. Father God, that's the hardest thing sometimes, is to really understand how much you love us. Lord, help us to get that revelation of how much you love us. 
You said if we knew how much you love us, we would want to sin. We would want to hide it, you know, get the word daily, Father. But Lord, I thank you for your grace. Lord, right now I just pray that, Father, that each day we would pray this prayer, that we would come before you and we would ask for your grace abundantly so we would not have to sin. But Lord, we need you. We need your word. We need to hide it in our hearts. We need to be all that you want us to be. So Lord, help us to desire you, to desire your word. And just forgive us for us neglecting that powerful love, Lord. So Father, just touch each one of our hearts tonight. That we would not go out of here the same, but we would desire you, that relationship, that we would spend time with you. Lord, that we would begin to shut off that TV or, or just go to the lake instead of just swimming, actually invite you with us, Lord, and spend time with you at the lake. But Father God, we just thank you for your love tonight. We thank you for your word, Lord, and he says, if we're not a doer of that word, why are we calling you Lord, Lord, and not doing the things you'd have us to do? But Father, we ask, Lord God, help us to be a doer, and not just hearing. Um, so Father, we thank you. Give us that strength and ability. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. And before you kids go, I have some rocks down there. Take a rock, and remember that Jesus Christ is your rock. He loves you very much. So that's just a reminder that don't let the devil come and blow your house down, okay? So pick out a rock, and there's more rocks than the kids. So if you guys need a rock for that reminder, come and help yourself. Uh, come and do that song, Happy Trails. <laughs>